Hello, everybody. This is Sunday, July 4th, and we are heading into week nine of our online astronomy course. So happy 4th of July. And I thought it would be fitting on the 4th of July to show some solar fireworks. Right now, um, you know, we're in a drought situation in Utah, so fireworks have been banned locally, but I can still show you some solar fireworks because in this module, we're going to be talking about the sun. So let me move off to the side here. And you can see we're looking at the uh, curved edge of the sun, and we're looking at a huge solar flare, this solar prominence, and just to the right of that is superimposed a picture of the Earth for scale. So you can see how big Earth is compared to this huge curtain of fire, this loop of fire that is being, you know, being ejected upwards from the sun's surface. Uh, the sun is amazing in every way. You know, it's huge. And if you take a look at the Earth there, how many Earths could you put inside the sun if you hollowed the sun out so it was hollow? And so you start dropping in Earths one at a time. One, two, three. You could drop a million Earths inside the sun. That's how huge the sun is. The sun is really fantastic in every way. And so if you think about, well, just how, what's it made of? If you look at the sun, if you look at the solar surface here, this burning solar surface, what is it that's burning? Is, this, is the sun made out of wood or charcoals, what's burning like a fire is? And the answer is no. The sun is made out of mostly hydrogen and helium. 71% of the sun's mass is made out of hydrogen and only 27% is made out of helium. And that means the other 2% is heavier elements. And those heavier elements are vaporized. In fact, the sun has no solid surface. You could go all the way through the sun and you won't reach a solid surface at all. Now, where does the sun get all this energy? How, how much energy does the sun give off? And it gives off uh, enough energy that it's equivalent to four million, 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 100 watt light bulbs. So that's how bright the sun is. And that's a fantastic amount of energy. I mean, in one second, the sun gives off enough energy to meet all of Earth's energy needs for 800,000 years. So the sun releases a huge amount of energy. And where does that energy come from? And in this module, you'll learn about that. You'll learn about uh, how four in the sun's core, which is where these reactions take place, in the sun's core, what happens is that four, protons come together and they are fused into one helium nucleus. So four protons, four hydrogen nuclei come together and they are, uh, they are fused together to form one helium nucleus. Well, so how does that release energy? Well, it turns out that for every 1,000 tons of hydrogen that go into this reaction, only 993 tons of helium come out. There's seven tons missing. And that seven tons has been changed into energy by Einstein's equation equals mc squared. That equation says that a little bit of mass can be changed into energy and the conversion factor is the speed of light squared, which is a huge number. So a little bit of mass lost can be transformed into a huge amount of energy. And in fact, our sun is losing about 4 million tons of energy every second being converted. I'm sorry, 4 million tons of mass every second being converted into energy. 
So I hope you'll enjoy learning about the sun. It's really fantastic. Uh, just recently, we sent a probe, the Parker Solar Probe, in that's going to go closer to the sun and is going closer to the sun, uh, closer than any other spacecraft that we've sent to study the sun. And you'll learn about some of the amazing discoveries that the Parker Solar Probe has made. And speaking of amazing discoveries, this has been quite the week for discoveries in astronomy. And so I'll just tell you about two of them. One of them has to do with a white dwarf star. Now, after our sun uses up all of the hydrogen that's available for these nuclear reactions in its center, it will change inside, but eventually it's gonna run out of nuclear fuel and then it will collapse to become a white dwarf star. And we'll be talking and learning about those uh, two modules from now. So two weeks from now, we'll be learning about white dwarf stars. And astronomers have just discovered the most massive white dwarf star. And let me show you what that looks like. That looks like that hot white ball that you see up there. And that is a white dwarf star. And the heaviest one is also the smallest one. It's about the size of Earth's moon. And in fact, if the white dwarf were much heavier and much smaller, it couldn't even support itself and it would explode as a supernova. And that's something else we'll be learning about in the weeks to come. So that is one of the discoveries that was announced this week. And another one that's really exciting has to do with the other two possible end states of stars. You know, when stars die, what do they become? They either become like a white dwarf or they can become a neutron star, a big ball of neutrons or a black hole. And this week, what was discovered is a neutron star that was passing too close to a black hole and got ripped apart. In fact, two of these were discovered. We detected the gravitational waves, the uh, slight vibrations of the structure of space and time that happen when a neutron star strayed too close to a black hole and got ripped apart and swallowed by the black hole. So these are things we'll be learning about in the modules to come, but for now, we're gonna start out just by learning about the star that's closest to us. And that is, of course, our sun. And finally, I want to end uh, just by taking a look, as we usually do at the end of these videos, at the night sky. So let's just take a look at Stellarium and see what, see what Stellarium has to show us. And there's Stellarium. Now, usually when I show you the night sky, we're facing south. But this time, I wanted to face north and show you some things in the northern sky. So, let's take a look there. Do you see anything? Well, over here, slightly to the west, is the Big Dipper. And you can see the four stars that make up the bowl of the Big Dipper and the three stars in the handle. The Big Dipper's in the constellation of Ursa Major, the Big Bear. Now there's also a little bear. And if you follow these two stars at the end of the bowl of the Big Dipper, just follow them in a straight line, you'll come over here to Polaris, the North Pole Star. The North Star is right above Earth's North Rotational Pole. And so as Earth rotates, all of the other stars appear to rotate around the North Star, Polaris. And Polaris is at the end of the Little Dipper. So here's the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. And here is the bowl of the Little Dipper, Ursa Minor, the Little Bear, very faint. There's one other constellation I want to show you. It's over here slightly to the east. It's these five stars that make up the constellation that form a big W in the sky. It jumps right out at you. I can find it easily. 
And so it's this star there, 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 there. So we're tracing out a big W in the sky. It doesn't stand for Weber. It stands or represents Queen Cassiopeia sitting on her throne. So this is the constellation of Cassiopeia. Here, let me show you uh, the lines and the names of the constellations. So here is Ursa Major, the Big Bear, and within Ursa Major, there is the asterism. An asterism is just a star pattern. There's the asterism of the Big Dipper right here that forms part of Ursa Major. And if we follow these two stars in the Big Dipper over, we come to the North Star, Polaris, and that's at the end of the handle of the Little Dipper, which is in the constellation Ursa Minor, the Little Bear. And finally over here, slightly to the east, is Queen Cassiopeia sitting on her throne, the constellation of Cassiopeia. I'll put up the figures here just for a second, and you can see how they were imagined. And the person who drew the bear had a pretty good imagination because bears do not have large tails like this. This is the big bear, Ursa Major. And if I follow these two st uh, stars and the Big Dipper's pole over, I hit the North Star in the constellation of the little bear, Ursa Minor, who also has this ridiculous long tail. And then over here is Queen Cassiopeia sitting on her throne. Now, there's some, let me turn these off first. There we go. I want to tell you about the new moon because the new moon is going to be next Saturday on July 10th. And that's a great time. I'm going to turn the sky around here to face south. That is a great time to see the Milky Way, our galaxy. And so if you go out a few days before the 10th, a few days after the 10th, so late next week or early next week, go out late at night and take a look at the splendor of the Milky Way rising out of the south at this time of year. It's really spectacular. So that's around the time of the new moon on the 10th, Saturday. And the fifth, which is tomorrow, is Earth's aphelion in its orbit around the sun. This is, tomorrow is gonna to be the time when Earth is farthest from the sun. So let me get out of Stellarium. And uh, what else is going on this week? Well, you have an exam and um, you can take that exam uh, starting tomorrow, the 5th, it runs through the 11th. And so you can take that exam anytime you want to. It's open book, it's open notes. Uh, no other resources are needed. And remember, you can take the exam if you want to. And by open notes, by the way, I meant open homework. You're welcome to look at the homework while you're doing the exam. Uh, and as always, uh, you can look at what the questions that you got wrong after your first attempt. So after your first attempt, go on Chi Tester, look at the questions you got wrong, look up the answers, and then take it again. And if you do that, I give you the, answer, the average of your two attempts. So good luck on that. And if you have any um, questions, you're free to uh, send me an email. Uh, we can do a Zoom meeting, we can meet in person, uh, whatever would be good for you. And so good luck on that exam and have a great week. I hope you enjoy learning about this fantastic nearest star that we have, our own sun. And it, it's really something really incredible. And I hope you find it as fascinating as I do. So have a great week. Have a fantastic 4th of July. And I'll look forward to seeing you next time. So until then, bye-bye.